Hey everyone, it's me Curtis. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you are a returning subscriber. As you guys can see, today I am joined with my one-year-old hedgehog, Leo. I just got him out of his cage, so he's a little bit grumpy, especially because he was already out today for a bath and a cage clean. Today, um, we are both just here to give you guys some facts and tips as to how to be a more efficient and even better hedgehog owner. He's huffing so much, guys, and I'm sure you can hear it. So just a little bit of background on hedgehogs in case you were just watching this video out of curiosity and you don't even know anything about hedgehogs. Hedgehogs um, that we keep in captivity are the African pygmy hedgehog, which are more of a domesticated species of hedgehog, although I believe they are found in the wild, which is a common misconception amongst most people. Nonetheless, as you guys can see, they are pretty anti-social pets. Um, I definitely would not recommend this to anyone who just sees cute pictures on Instagram and wants one, because that is not the reality of what owning one of them is going to be like. A lot of times these guys are not going to want to be handled, picked up, interacted with, or socialized. And so for that reason, it can be difficult difficult for a lot of people to, you know, get their hedgehog to come out of their shell and get used to them, which usually results in them kind of being put on the shelf and forgotten about. So that's why today I just compiled a few of the tips that I use regularly um, to kind of help you better care for your hedgehog and even get your hedgehog to get used to you a little bit more. Keep in mind, this is not a how to bond with your hedgehog video, but if that is something you guys would like, um, I can definitely give you guys my tips uh, as to how I kind of got my hedgehog to get a little bit used to me when he's not acting like this. But for today's video, we are just going to talk about a few general tips to better their care. So the first tip that I have is something that my breeder actually told me when um, I first got my hedgehog, and that is to use the same detergent and or fabric softener every single time you clean your hedgehog's fleece. So obviously some people do not use fleece for their hedgehog, but a majority of people, I'm sorry if you guys can just hear him puffing in the background, but a majority of people who do own African pygmy hedgehogs in captivity will use um, fleece for their hedgehogs and just swap them out whenever they get a little bit dirty. So something that really stresses hedgehogs out is like new environments, new smells and obviously new people but um, as far as the smells go they're going to be in their cage a majority of the time so trying to keep that same smell if it's not their own is going to actually help them out a lot and relieve some of their stress because you know using a different detergent every single time is going to make them feel like they're in a new environment every single time whereas if you stick to one they'll know that smell and that smell only. The next tip that I have kind of goes along with the first one and that is just to leave at least one unwashed item inside of your cage every time you do a full clean. For the, about the same reasons they do reduce stress being able to smell something that smells like them rather than freshly washed linens. I usually leave my hedgehog's stuffed animal in his cage and uh, my red t-shirt. I don't think I've actually ever washed that. That's the only thing that's in there that probably hasn't been washed. But giving them those one or two items to kind of keep them grounded and give them that sense of familiarity are really going to help them not be so crabby and stressed when getting a cage clean. He was being perfectly fine earlier. I think another re thing is that like I'm filming in the dark right now other than like a super bright ring light. So the light he probably doesn't like which I just realized so I probably won't hold him to the light so much anymore. So the next tip that I have for you in your hedgehog is to wet your hedgehog frequently. Hedgehogs are one of those animals where there is not really an exact weight where every hedgehog should be. They vary a lot across the board. You will see some genetically smaller hedgehogs and genetically larger hedgehogs. And I say genetically to mean that just genetically they they are engineered to be either larger or smaller. I'm not talking about a starving hedgehog versus an obese hedgehog. Hedgehogs vary a lot in weight, um, not only by gender, but just again by like the specific um, pedigree where your hedgehog comes from. So it's important to know where your hedgehog's healthy weight is so that you know if they are losing a substantial amount of weight, if they're gaining a lot of weight, and if you should change their diet and whatnot. Leo here is more of a smaller hedgehog, I'll say. Um, He's definitely not as big as some of the hedgehogs I've seen elsewhere, but uh, he's definitely not the smallest as well, so I think he's at a pretty healthy weight. He doesn't typically overeat his food, so I don't really have to manage the amount of food that he eats, which I found is a really, really um, beneficial thing on my part. This next tip is probably going to be one of the only ones in this list that is going to be one of those things I said to help you and your hedgehog get along better, and that is to take your hedgehog out often. I cannot stress this enough, um, especially because whenever you're getting a 
Hedgehog, or really any animal for the first time, you're just super excited to see how they act, what they like, feeding them, and all that kind of stuff. The, sometimes you forget about the most basic things that are going to be the most essential to them. And for these animals, taking them out daily or at least every other day is going to be one of the most important things that you can do for them within their life. It is definitely something that I regret not doing super um, systematically because as you guys can see, it takes him a while to warm up to me once he is removed from his cage. Usually when you see those super happy hedgehogs that are just ready to be handled, played, and uh, take belly rubs on Instagram or social media, they have probably been handled daily, which is a really, really good thing. And then obviously there's some hedgehogs that aren't handled daily, maybe weekly or every few days that aren't exactly used to that. And honestly, some hedgehogs, again, it has to do with genetics, are just going to be bred to be more sociable, which is something that um, you should look out for when getting a hedgehog. But just because you um, do buy a hedgehog that is a little bit less sociable does not mean that you cannot teach it to be a little bit more outgoing and personable. Hedgehogs are very, very, very timid animals, so really not sticking to this routine is not going to help them lose that um, little sense of natural instinct to just always want to ball up and get away from the attention. My next two tips kind of go with one another, and the first one is going to be to use water bowls rather than water bottles. So if you are kind of aware of like the whole small pet community here on YouTube and just in general, you will know that over the last few years, people have stopped recommending water bottles for animals like rabbits, hamsters, and other various small animals. This is because although it is convenient to have a water supply that stays mostly clean for X amount of days, um, especially because you can choose a different size water bottle to hold more water, it is very unnatural for an animal to just go up to a water bottle in nature because there really aren't any outside in the wilderness and take a few gulps from a water bottle hanging on a tree. Some animals are actually very, very sensitive to this. Um, I believe rabbits can actually have issues with their necks if they drink from a water bottle for too long. So just for that reason, um, it's much easier to just have two bowls in your cage, one for food and one for water. Same thing with these guys. I know when I did get um, Leo from the breeder, the breeder was very prideful and like, oh, we know um, our hedgehogs know how to use bottles. They've been bottle fed since they've been babies. And when I first got him, I did kind of stick to that for the first few months, maybe two months actually. But I, after doing more research, realized that this is not the best thing for him, which is why I have since then changed him over to a water bowl. And just quickly, the second tip that I said is kind of intertwined with that is to use ceramic or porcelain or just weighted bowls in general. Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs can be very, very crazy animals, and at night, aside from running on their wheel, they typically like to tear apart their fleece, go under the fleece, and just mess up everything else in their cage. So if you have like light plastic bowls or anything, chances are that, that the rate of spills that your hedgehog is going to do are going to be much higher. Um, because I know that like every day my hedgehog's cage is crazy, his wheel is moved, his um, like hides and everything are all moved around. So if he didn't have two ceramic bowls in his cage, I know that his food and water would be making his cage a mess. I have two more facts left for this video. The first is to, you may have heard this one actually before, but the first one is to actually feed your hedgehog more than one cat kibble. Now there are a few reasons why people say to feed more than one cat kibble. Two of the most important reasons, however, are the first that if one of those, if that one food that you're feeding does decide to get continued or by any chance is taken off the market and your hedgehog has only been solely eating that food for X amount of time and they won't eat any other food, once that food is pulled off the shelves, your hedgehog may refuse to eat any other food which then in turn will cause your hedgehog to starve. Now obviously you don't want your hedgehog to starve, but on the other hand, you would typically find that just one cat food is not going to have enough variety to provide enough nutrients for your hedgehog. So many, many vets and hedgehog activists, or whatever you want to call them, will recommend that you have more than one cat food to offer enough um, nutritional balance in their diet. And I believe I actually have a video as to what I feed my hedgehog, so I will leave the link to that up here in a card so you guys can check that video out and see what I feed my hedgehog. If I remember, I will also try and leave a link in the description of today's video with a list of different grade hedgehog foods for you to mix and match to get a great mix for your hedgehog. And these are um, commercial mixes that are sold on the market. Now the last tip that I have to share with you guys in today's video is to be not get used to now the last tip that I have to share with you guys for today's video is to not get used to handling your hedgehog with gloves. 
Depending on who you speak to, they may recommend that you do handle your hedgehog with gloves to avoid the pain and if you have to emergency move your hedgehog or whatever the case is. But chances are that you, the um, emergency situation where you have to move your hedgehog quickly is going to be very, very low and people are just going to get used to handling their hedgehog with gloves, which is going to do a couple things that are not going to help your hedgehog. The first is your hedgehog is not going to get used to your smell, so they're not going to really stop huffing and puffing and wanting to unbox because they don't know what you smell like so once you actually do start taking the gloves off it's just gonna be just as new as anyone else getting your hedgehog and the second thing is that besides your hedgehog recognizing who you are you are not gonna have any experience with handling a hedgehog that is sharp and prickly people ask all the time like oh does this hurt oh does this hurt yes this hurts you know every time he jumps like his little quills go in my hand but I've gotten used to it and you kind of learn how to handle them to kind of avoid as much pain at any cost that you can. However, if you're using gloves, you're not going to know how to avoid and actually begin to handle your hedgehog in the first place. Alright everyone, so those are all of these tips that I have to share with you guys in today's video on how you can better your hedgehog care or anything. I know a lot of you guys have asked me to make more hedgehog videos and now that I have been owning hedgehogs for nearly one and a half to almost two years now, I feel a little bit more confident with sharing the knowledge that I have accumulated within even the years prior to me owning my own hedgehog. If you guys would like, I can make a second part to this that has to do maybe more with bonding or anything else that you guys would like to know about owning hedgehogs. And if there's anything in today's video that you did want answered that I did not cover, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys would like more frequent pictures, posts, and updates about my pets before they hit my YouTube channel, like Alfie, oh, this is not Alfie, whoops. Like Leo here, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, which is just at Curtis Hussain, just like my channel name. I also operate my own Etsy shop through Etsy, obviously, where I sell pet supplies for rodents, reptiles, birds, dogs, and more. So if you want to check that out, the link to that is always in the description of all of my videos. If you click on over here, you can watch my last video and click the button below to subscribe to the channel and make sure that you do not miss any more of my future content just like today's. I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video and for all the continuous support, and I hope to see you all in the next one.